Hopefully we'll connect in conversation, not in silence. But uh, so this is a timeless journey at which we stand. The other timeless journey at which uh, intersection of which we stand today is a struggle of common people to find voice and, and realize their democratic rights. Another timeless journey. And both these professors, uh, preeminent in the world, renowned for taking on uh, the most powerful hegemonies, questioning what has never been questioned before in the interests of the voice and democratic rights of the poorest people of the world uh, can again take us forward on this timeless journey so that our work here uh, as the people interested in the public space can be strengthened by this conversation. So thank you very much to these uh, two very eminent professors uh, for being here. Let me request uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi as a token of our uh, appreciation to present a small gift to May I request the two professors to come up on stage, and Mr. Rahul Gandhi also, and uh, to receive uh, these uh, small tokens of appreciation. Professor Nandi, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you very much again to Mr. Rahul Gandhi. We will now proceed to the public conversation. Uh, what we are planning is to have a conversation for about an hour or so, uh, and then have about half an hour to 40 minutes of uh, questions and answers. Uh, that's what we are planning. Um, so, may I request Professor Nandi to kindly initiate the conversation. He, Thank you very much. He might, might get engrossed in the conversation too much. I, I, so, you raise your finger from there. I will, I will, there. I will degross you. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with something very innocuous. Uh, why don't you tell the audience what are your first reactions, this being your first visit to India? Uh, you know, uh, Europeans have a, have a term called Stendhal uh, syndrome, or Florence syndrome. Uh, they get hypochondriac when they go to uh, Florence. So much culture suddenly coming to them. Uh, they don't know what to do. They breathe heavily. They, uh, they, their heart palpitation goes up and so forth. So, uh, to me, I just turned 61. To come to India and come to Delhi and uh, so forth, it is so overwhelming that I have had to uh, block it, block it away, and only concentrate on one event at a time. It's very other, otherwise, if I allow it to uh, uh, to overwhelm me, it would be paralyzing. Professor Gopal very kindly took us to the Red Fort, and in the palace we saw a poem of Amitabha Dehlavi. Uh, if paradise were to be on earth, is right here, is right here, right here. That language of Amir Khosro uh, Dehlavi is the language that my wife and I speak together to each other. It's so common. So, uh, when Professor Gopal introduced you as our own, I thought, I'm also one of your own. Uh, it is not a coming to visit an other that is very similar to me. It's actually coming home. It's profoundly an element of coming home to me. As you know, because I'm a troublemaker and I can't go, I can only go to Iran one way, and I can only talk to my interrogators, I wouldn't have an audience. Uh, over the years, I have developed a number of simulacra of places, mostly the Arab, from Morocco to Palestine. Uh, but India, uh, because of the language, is, is closest to me, closest to my heart, closest to my uh, language, the language that my mother sang a lullaby to me. Uh, so in that sense, is a, is a homecoming of a profound moral and intellectual uh, nature that it will take me, I have been busy literally from a couple of hours after I arrived until a few hours before I depart, so rich and overwhelming that uh, 
uh, there is this sense of a re rediscovery, what is my own, uh, and overcoming of the post-colonial nation state that Iran is here and India is here. And as I told you, I just finished a book on the, uh, the world of Persian literary humanism. And uh, the fact of the matter is, when you write about Persian literary humanism, and you come to the, uh, the 16th century, no longer post-colonial nation state makes any sense. And most of the literary historiography of, uh, of the past 200 years, beginning with Orientalist mode of uh, uh, literary historiography, comes to the 16th century, and then they have to shift, the site shifts from Iran, comes to India. And then many Orientalist historians of literature, they say, oh, isn't that amazing that Indians uh, had such a fantastic command over Persia? Which is odd to me, because per Persian to me is an Indian language, uh, as Indians have domesticated English language as well. So th there are too many aspects. Uh, it, it will take me a long time to digest. But uh, did something jar in India in the last few days? Jarring? Yeah. Poverty. 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 I mean, we are uh, being treated uh, like semi-royalties in extremely rich and, uh, and uh, privileged context in, in the hotels, for which we're very grateful. But uh, this, uh, this trips between, for example, I was initially here uh, graciously hosted by the Ostian Swim Festival, uh, between our hotels and the site of the festival, or between the hotels or the site of the Rajiv Gandhi Institute, uh, this, uh, this uh, poverty is, and homelessness is uh, very troubling. Uh, I, I will never presume to lecture anybody about anything. I, mean, I don't come from the, the, my natural habitat. I live in Harlem. Harlem is not a particularly, uh, the infant mortality rate and life expectancy in Harlem is not any better than many other uh, slums of the world. So, uh, despite the fact that I live in a, in a colonial settlement, of Columbia University. Uh, the fact is that uh, this jarring discrepancy, 15 million Americans live under the poverty line, uh, almost the same uh, without uh, insurance. This is a global condition. But uh, let me ask you this question now a different way. Do you, do you think or would you agree if I say that obvious poverty, poverty that you cannot ignore, in some way makes a city and a country more interesting because its problems are up front. There is no doubt in my mind that New York is the most interesting city in the United States. It is the most addictive. Artists, writers, painters, all assemble there. And they do so perhaps to some extent because the problems of the United States do not remain hidden. Oh, I'm right there in front of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm asking this because in India too, many people are deeply embarrassed about poverty. They try to hide it. Right next to my home, they put up very large hoardings on the, during the Commonwealth Games where we would hide the slums. But there is something in, 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 in the presence of 